Welcome to the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Now enjoy the show. All right, guys, I want to tell you a little bit about Type 1 Lifting. So Type 1 Lifting is a clothing brand that proceeds of the shirts, the hats, and everything else go to the Children's Diabetes Foundation. This whole t-shirt company started from me taking care of a five-year-old girl from the emergency department at the Children's Hospital I worked at in Atlanta for a while back. Um, I thought I needed to do a little bit more than kind of just talk about my story. So this is how I started the clothing line because I wanted to show people that even though diabetics have this really bad disease, we can still do amazing things in our life and diabetes won't stop, you know, stop us reaching our goals. So go check out type one lifting.com. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, you can always reach me out on Instagram. It's type one lifting and hope you guys enjoy the show. Hey guys, we have a new sponsor for the type one lifting podcast. The company's called Liberté lifestyle. So Liberté is a French word meaning freedom, and the company was founded on the desire to have freedom to choose what we want to do with our lives. I actually had the owner, um, Nicole, on my podcast on episode 28, so if you want to go back and listen to her, um, she talks about how she started the company and what she wants to do in the future with the company, which is pretty cool. So uh, they actually have knee sleeves, wrist wraps, shirts, shorts. Uh, Love the knee sleeves. I have the ice cream knee sleeves and I love them so much they haven't the neoprene still good uh, the seams haven't split compared to other uh, knee sleeves that I have had in the past uh, and I'm planning to keep these for a very very long time so uh, Nicole actually gave me a promo code for you guys too so it's all capital letters T Y P E and the number one so it's type one so go to liberté lifestyle.com uh, check out what they have in the store use the promo code type one and save some coin now let's go to the episode All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Um, I have a very good friend. Well, I consider you a friend. So a very good friend that uh, I've known for a while, and he actually owns a gym called CrossFit Prosperity down up in Massachusetts in Norwood. Uh, this is Craig Robertson. How you doing? I'm good, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Um, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad I went back to your gym a couple of weeks ago. Granted, my dad passed away and he was in the ICU and that's the reason why I was up there. But um, your your gym is probably one of the sickest gyms I've I've seen and I've been Thank to. Uh, yeah. n- number one is CrossFit East Nashville because that thing's like a football, like three football fields yeah. together. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, but uh, but yeah, I, I kind of wanted to talk about your experience in CrossFit and how you started the gym and everything. So uh, with all that, um, How did you get involved with CrossFit? Um, So I started working out. Well, I mean, I started playing sports when I was, you know, old enough to walk. Um, I remember my sister signing up to play soccer when I was four years old and crying all the way home because I wouldn't (laughs) want to sign up yet because I wasn't old enough. Um, (laughs) And then uh, she went on to be uh, more of a school type and I went on to be the actual athlete in the family, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, So I started working out when I was maybe about 15, Uh, I think maybe like three months short of my 16th birthday. My mom lied about my age so I could work out without her there. Mm -hmm. You had to be 16 to be in the gym by herself. Um, So I started working out, started kind of seeing the way it can change your body and kind of the whole, you know, the work you put in is actually what you get out with working out, which I Mm -hmm. thought was pretty cool. Uh, I kind of fell in love with that there and decided that was kind of what I wanted to do the rest of my life. Uh, so I figured that out pretty early. I always expected it to be more of like an LA fitness, big box type gym kind of thing. Uh, so I went to school for exercise science, uh, fitness club administration, took a couple classes on that stuff. And then um, I did an internship at a big box gym and it was awful. It was just not at all what I wanted to do. I mean, I was personal training people this whole time, right? I got my personal training certification, I think a week after I turned 18, Mm-hmm. Uh, worked at GNC, did the, you know, the gym guy thing. Um, <laughs> but I, um, yeah, just that the whole kind of predatory nature of big box gym just really turned me off to the whole thing. Uh, the whole, I want to sign up a bunch of people and hope they never work out. Mm-hmm. Uh, really for me, I really liked helping people and actually getting them to kind of see why I like going to the gym and why I fell in love with it. So I kind of fell out of it for a while. I was still personal training on the side, but I ended up going to work construction for a little while. 
Uh, I worked for my dad's company, and I don't know if anybody's listening that's ever worked for their father's company. He likes you, but nobody else does. <laughs> um, so uh, I was kind of the, the guy that got the short end of the stick a lot, up on the 30-foot ladders on top of the top of the van, uh, in, the, in the crawl spaces, all that. And I was mm -hmm. like, this cannot be what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Um, so I was still personal training. They opened up a CrossFit gym in the back of the gym that I was working at. And this was back in like end of 2010, beginning of 2011. Wow. That's, that's, that's back in the day. Yeah. So early CrossFit. Yeah. Um, and I already worked out all the time. I mean, I was never like a big person. So, uh, but I lifted a lot and I had a good idea of what I was doing. Uh, so the guy's like, Hey, come back and try CrossFit. And I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to, I don't need you to show me how to work out. Like I have a pretty good handle on it. And then I see a couple guys like walking around back there. I'm like, those guys are pretty jacked back there. Like they're doing something right. Mm -hmm. um, the guy stayed on me a little while, got me to finally go back. He's like, I'll give you a free week. I'm like, all right, I'll try it. Um, so I went back and keep in mind, I was 23 at the time. I thought I was in really good shape. Uh, my first workout was fight gone bad. Um, oh. yeah. <laughs> So uh, this was back when, I mean, CrossFit, you've been to a bunch of CrossFit gyms, right? So mm -hmm. back then CrossFit gyms had whatever equipment they could kind of find on Craigslist. So we had like three barbells, two rowers, like five wall balls. Like, um, so we had to split it up and start at different stations. And the guy goes, all right, so you're going to start on the rower. You're going to do a minute of as many calories as you can. Then you're going to come off the rower. You're going to do a minute of as many wall balls as you can. And having never done that style of workout, I'm like, okay, a minute. I'm going to go as hard as I can for a minute, <laughs> not knowing that there are 16 more minutes of this to go. Mm -hmm. So I did something like 27 calories or something like that in the first minute, just like completely just sent it and then got to the wall ball, maybe, maybe 20 wall balls and then got to the box and I, I couldn't leave the ground. Mm -hmm. Like just completely <laughs> smoked. And I'm only two and a half minutes in. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Yep. Um, ended up, yeah, I think I scored. If you, you've done enough fight gone bads, right? I scored like 183 or something. I don't know. I like remember that number. <laughs> I think I got like 100 the first round and then like 40 the next round. Yep. Yeah. Um, so and there's this woman in the gym that I had used to work out with. She was like in her 50s. She was a personal trainer at the, the big box side of it that I worked at. And she got 230, 240, something like that. And this is a woman that's close to 60. And I'm a 23 year old former athlete thinking that I was in good shape. Yep. I'm like, all right, I'm coming back tomorrow. I'm going to beat this woman at whatever it is. Next day, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my ass kicked twice by this older woman. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sign up for this. I'm going to just keep training at it. I'm going to get good at it. Uh, come to find out that woman went to the games five times as a master's athlete. So <laughs> obviously a very fit individual. Yeah. Um, but I just kind of, anything that exposed that many holes in what I was doing for fitness, I thought had to, had to be the right thing to do. So I just got into that, started going hard for it. Uh, I started like back then you could be pretty good if you were somewhat athletic, right? Like, mm -hmm. there yeah. There weren't a lot of Matt Frazier's around back then. There was Rich Froning, which he was, you know, this phenomenal freak that came in and just smoked everybody day one. But you had like the Jeremy Kinnicks and guys like that, that started overweight, couldn't even do a pull-up and then went to the games. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like it is now where you're 19 years old and have nine years of experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was one of the better guys at the gym, just being an athlete and fairly strong. So obviously it's fun to be good at stuff. So, um, got super into it there, started training other people. And then I actually uh, ended up, uh, moving out to California for about a year. And then I trained out in uh, Los Angeles and it was really fun. So on the way out there, um, I kind of did a box tour. So like we drove down the East coast, I went to a gym in pretty much every single state all the way out to California. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Which it helped too, because I kind of took what I liked from all the gyms. And um, I put a lot of that into when I started my own gym. I was like, all right, what did I see at these gyms that was really cool? Like, what did I kind of not care for? Uh, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then I got uh, into coaching out in California. I ended up becoming a head coach of a gym out there. I got really into programming, writing workouts for other people. Um, 
being in Calif like Southern California at the kind of start of CrossFit was a real culture shock to being the one of the better people in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, though. I ended up going <laughs> to uh, Valley CrossFit, and at the time they had three girls in the games. Two of them are podium athletes, uh, and they had a couple guys that were um, up and comers that ended up going to the games too. So the workouts that I used to be, you know, kind of crushing people at out here, I go out there and they're doing wads with my max. Uh -huh. oh, okay. This is again, <laughs> here I am not as good as I once thought I was. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I ended up getting super into it out there, did a bunch of courses. I got fortunate. Um, I was able to take like the only course with Mike Bergner and do the mobility course. Like, Oh, that's really cool. Right? Yeah. So I got to kind of learn from a lot of the OGs. Um, and then I tried to open up a gym out there, but the, um, the zoning laws are insane in Los Angeles. Like it's mm -hmm. a lot of kind of bureaucracy, get yeah. some money and we'll think about letting you open a gym six months to a year from now. Uh, so uh, my family's here in Massachusetts. So I decided to come back, uh, worked at a gym out here for a little while to get myself situated and then put my, put my life into my own gym. Nice. So um, we actually have a little bit of something in common. So yeah. we've been a trainer at a big box gym and yeah. we've seen how, you know, a lot of people just like, they just want, it's like all, all money, just all about yeah. the money. All and that's, and that's it. Like right. I've had a couple of uh, clients of mine that have lost like 60 plus pounds, you know, working out there. But I, I realized like half these, like the owners, they just don't care. They just see every quarter or every month. They're mm -hmm. like, okay, where do I need to make more money? And it's insane because the gym that I was uh, training at in Georgia, it was the most used gym out of the whole company. And it would, people were flying in and like, they had no idea what they were doing. And they were, they're always trying to sell like personal training stuff. Yeah. And they just, they didn't want them to show up. And it was yeah. insane. They were making like five grand off of protein shakes a month. No, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, like, and the one thing that really took like just you know i wasn't a big fan of i was actually like you know you know not a, i was just like so disappointed is when with the man one of the managers the district manager went to like a 13 year old kid and said like this kid got a power raid from like the you know refrigerator and he's like well you know we have a deal for you know two for three dollars for two power raids and so the kid went to go get another power raid but it was already a dollar fifty so of course it's going to be three dollars for two for okay. two and i'm like i'm like why i'm like yeah. that's such a scumbag move i'm sorry it's and it's like i mean that whole industry is based on that right like mm -hmm. if you look at something like a planet fitness that's ten dollars a month you figure what 30 35 000 square foot warehouse just the rent on that's 20 grand right yeah so they need how many what's that two thousand members they need just to pay the rent Mm -hmm. Imagine if 2000 people showed up to your gym every day and hammered on the equipment, right? Yeah. It doesn't even pay anybody. That doesn't make profit. So like the whole model is made for you to not show up, mm -hmm. which it, is crazy. Yeah. It just, that was a huge turnoff for me because I, I liked the training side of going to the gym, right? Like I liked, like one of the coolest things about CrossFit as far as training somebody goes is there's not a single person that goes to my gym that isn't now doing something that day one they were like, I could never do that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I, you see that constantly in CrossFit. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be specifically CrossFit, right? Like obviously I've chosen CrossFit. I think that's the best option, but just actually caring about people and getting them to at least closer to what they want. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love seeing the videos like the first bar muscle ups or first ring yeah. muscle ups and like see all these people like start kicking their legs and like getting super excited. And like, right. you don't really see that at a global gym. Right. Yeah. So, so some of the funniest videos you watch of people lifting is their coaches in the background going like, yep, yep, yeah. in their head doing the lift <laughs> with them. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. You get to experience the feeling with them, even if it's not you doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah and, which was really cool about crossfit in the beginning too was you'd watch the games and you'd be like oh i know exactly how that guy feels right now mm -hmm. like, i've done that workout before yeah exactly um, exactly so um you said you moved back to back home to work uh to you know work with your dad and stuff like that because it didn't yeah. work out for uh, la so when did you kind of have that feeling like okay you know all right i, I think this is the right time to start a, to own a gym 
that was a, a lot of things kind of all worked out that way. I was actually running across, I was a head coach of a CrossFit gym that was actually doing very well at the time. Uh, it was inside of a big box gym though. Uh -huh. uh, and the guy that ran the big box gym just did not have any sort of business sense of what to do with the money. Like the CrossFit was taking in 25 grand a month, I think something like that at the time, which was pretty good back in 2000. Yeah. 13. Um, and he bankrupt the big side of the gym, uh, sold all the members to a different CrossFit gym. And that was my full-time job at the time I was looking for houses. Um, so I just took all the money that I was going to put as a down payment for a house and went out and did it on my own. Wow. And that was always the goal, right? It was just, yeah. sometimes you just need that push off the ledge. Yeah. Like, now was, was Norwood like the, like, so, so, Norwood's like right next to the Gillette stadium. It's like a stone's throw away. So yeah. was that the area you were looking to, you know, start the gym or you were looking to go to Bridgewater? Like where, what was kind of um, like the gist of like where, where you wanted to, uh, you know, set, set a foot in your box. So it's actually another somewhat, I guess, controversial point. Right. Uh, so like I talk kind of a lot about the good old days of CrossFit, I think a little bit, uh, there was respect between gym owners, I think, right? Like where you wouldn't open up next door to somebody else. You just didn't do that. Mm. So I looked at the CrossFit affiliate map and, you know, you see all the little dots on it. I'm like, where is there a hole, right? Like, where can I go that there's going to be enough people to sustain a business that I'm not going to be stepping on anybody else's feet? Um, I really wanted to do my own thing and be able to work with other gyms and have uh, community aspect to it, uh, not just within my own walls, but being able to talk to other gym owners and bounce ideas off each other and maybe do group events with them. Yeah. Like a mastermind kind of. Yeah. Right. Which you can't do if you open up on the same street and try to take their business. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, people do that now. Um, but that just isn't what I thought was the right thing to do. So I just tried to kind of open up as far away from other gyms as I could, uh, while still giving myself a chance to be successful. And that doesn't mean I wasn't in the same town as another gym. I originally actually opened up in Walpole and there was another gym there, but Walpole is not a small, small town and they're completely on the other side of it. So I was more to Sharon, right? You grew up in Sharon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I was more kind of pulling from Sharon and Canton in that area. And then the gym that was in Walpole is like in Walpole center. So they were pulling more from the Medfield side of Walpole. Mm -hmm. so Everybody listening has no idea what that means. But That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> complete opposite sides of town. One's rural and then I was more on like the main street. So I was more of like the commuter gym. Mm -hmm. And so um, you finally got that gym off of, you know, a major, a major road, Route 1. Yeah. So um, how, how did you start since you like when you started the gym, how did you get people like into the door? It was hard. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. I, yeah. I had three members when I opened. Uh, so... I opened up kind of late in the game, right? So CrossFit, when you, in 2011, 12, you open a CrossFit gym and people found you. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time I opened in 2015, you really had to pull people in. Um, so initially I would just go there at five in the morning with my, you know, three members spread out throughout the whole day and just stay there the whole day and kind of poke my head out the door. Anybody that walked anywhere remotely close and, hey, do you want to try some uh, CrossFit? Nope. All set. Um, <laughs> but I went like businesses, uh, it's on, it's on a major uh, route. It's called the auto mile. So there's a lot of car dealerships. So I would go into all the car dealerships, hand out flyers. I went to the police station, fire station. Um, I did a lot of Facebook. Facebook worked a lot better back then as far as Facebook marketing, there wasn't a ton of that going around. It was somewhat newer. Yeah. So I got some people in there. There was this thing that uh, Tommy Hackenbrook, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. Uh, from Utah. He had this thing called the six week challenge that would like get people to come into your gym and then you get like 20 or 30 people and hope to keep 10 of them. Um, and then it just, once you get, like, it was really hard to get the first like 30. And then once you get 30, then that kind of starts to roll a little bit. Uh, it's like this conundrum where somebody would come into your gym and there'd be two other people there and they're like, well, this is lame, right? Because CrossFit's more about the community aspect and then they'd leave and then the next person would come in and be like, oh, there's only two people here. And I'm like, yeah, but if you stay, then the next person will be four, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
So it just took getting some momentum. And then, then you get little roadblocks along the way. Uh, I was coaching every single class myself. So I was there 5.30 in the morning till eight at night, Monday through Friday, another five or six hours on Saturday. Um, and I didn't want to not ever be there, right? So I wouldn't like leave in the middle of the day because somebody might come in and ask me a question about the gym and I didn't want to miss that chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a lot of burnout, but once I got rolling, once I got to 50, 60 members, then it started to really pick up. Um, nice. Okay. And then it kind of rolled. And then everybody brings their friends from there. So, yeah. So you said, um, I, I kind of want to talk about like the, um, the business and social aspect too of, you know, owning a gym. So you said you were there from like 5 30 AM to like 8 PM. Yeah. And like, so, you know, how did you manage like kind of like a social life as well as, you know, not getting burnt. I know you say you got a little burnt out, but like, how did you kind of, you know, prevent yourself from like not quitting and just, you know, keep on going? Um, well, I didn't have a social life. Uh, <laughs> like, my social life was just talking to people while they're in the gym, which was, you know, not great for me, but good for the business because then I ended up with a personal relationship with everybody, right? Like I yeah. knew everybody, I knew what everybody did for work. I knew the kids' names. I knew everybody's weights, right? Like somebody would come in and they'd be like, oh, we're doing back squats today. We're at 60%. What is that? And I was like, well, well, last time you did 185. So you'll do this. Like, how do you know that? I'm like, I don't know. Cause this is all I'm doing. Right. <laughs> really have yeah. stuff to put in my head. Uh, so I remember, you know, 60 people's back squat PRs and stuff like that. that. That's impressive. That's really impressive. Yeah. I have one of those, I, I remember a lot of information and not all of it's useful, but it stays in there. Yeah. I, I am, I'm a wealth of just useless knowledge. Like I'll remember the most like random stuff when it comes to like my family and stuff, like my wife will ask it like, Oh, like, you know, who's this person or like, I'm like, I don't, I don't remember, but I'll, I'll know like what I, what like she had for breakfast, like, like a month ago. Yeah. And so yeah, just I'm like, that. yeah. Um, she likes it and hates it at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, you said this. She's like, no, I did not. I'm like, I'm positive. You were wearing this shirt. You said on that edge of the couch. And this is what you said. And then other days, she's like, oh, remember I told you about this. I'm like, you never said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely did. I just heard her laugh from the other room. <laughs> so um, like, so uh, even with having, do, were you, were you, did, were you with her the whole time of you no, owning the gym? We, uh, we met in 2018. So, okay. Uh, I was going it alone for a little while there. Okay. So time for it, you know, like it just wouldn't have been fair to anybody. Yeah. You don't date anybody that's actually in your gym too. No, no, <laughs> no crap you eat. Right? Yeah. So did you have like any part of, you know, your training that you wanted to quit or anything like that, or just like, say like, Hey, I really need to find somebody before I like, I lose it. Uh, yeah, I definitely wanted help, but I, I also am that like, if you want something done right, do it yourself person. Mm-hmm. So, yep it was really hard to let go a little bit. Um, So I don't know that I ever wanted to quit, but there are definitely times where I wanted to not be there. Yeah. Um, It's still what I want to do. Like, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I even like, I joke about people about winning the lottery or something like that. And I'm like, I think I would still coach. Right. Like, I think I'd still, I wouldn't be married to it. Right. I would be able to go on vacations and have a yacht or something like that. But yeah. I think I would still come in and coach a couple classes here and there. I just wouldn't have to. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a big difference between liking, like doing coaching because you like to versus having to coach. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. So um, when you started the gym, you said you were like earlier, you were on to like, you were a big fan of like programming and stuff like that. So what made you like, did you ever have like any thoughts of like, you know, maybe having an outside source to program or you just, your or your like main focus was like, okay, I'm programming everything. Uh, I went through a couple phases of that. So um, I guess I was a little bit of a snob for a little bit and not saying that my program is the best. Um, there's definitely people that that know their stuff out there. But I more was like, everybody has weights, everybody has rubber mats, but your programming is what makes your gym. Mm-hmm. So if you're just taking somebody else's programming, then what's your brand, right? Yeah. Uh, you're just a facilitator. Right. Like I give somebody the space and tell them how to do it versus I'm creating what they're doing. Um, but I definitely that was one of the things, you know, for you know, 50 bucks, you can get on comp train or something like that. And, you know, Ben Bergeron's a great coach, so he writes good programming. 
but it, I found it wasn't really written for my people. Um, I kind of take ownership of who's in my gym and I look at how people are progressing and where people are doing well and what they need a little bit more work on. And when I'm writing the programming, I can adapt that to them. Whereas comp train or something like that, while it's a good program on its own, it doesn't really have the ability to do that. Yeah. If I'm going to pay somebody else to do programming and then just change it anyway, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. You might as well just keep your name, change your name to comp train. Yeah. Um, or, you know, see if any, like, I'd probably get a ton of business if I did that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it's not a knock in the programming. It's all good programming. Uh, when I was competing, I'd follow other people's programming. I don't want to, I don't like writing for myself because I'll, even if you try to write to make yourself better, you still write stuff easier to your strengths, right? Yeah. Like you might write like 12 handstand pushups when somebody else would write you 20. Mm -hmm. Like, well, enough. I'll yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, what is your style of programming? Um, it's more general physical, uh, like, you know, GPP, kind of classic CrossFit. Um, I also, my membership is just general people that want to not, you know, not be fat and not die early. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, I write the programming for that person. I don't, I'm not trying to send anybody to the games. If you want to go to the games, I can write you programming to get you there. Well, if you're naturally also very good at CrossFit. Um, it doesn't matter how good the programming is. <laughs> we're at that point with CrossFit, right? Like yeah. these people that go to the games, they were the best person at CrossFit in their gym their first day. They mm -hmm. just had to learn how to apply it. Um, but for the majority of it, it's just writing workouts to get you stronger, get you moving better, give you some cardiovascular fitness, uh, and just kind of make life easier for you. That's generally how I write it. Um, People go back and forth with the debate of whether you can do strength and conditioning on the same day. But when you're writing for the general population, I found that people don't tend to stick around the gym and like it as much if you're doing a five by five back squat today. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can make that take an hour if you drill positions and warm up and all that stuff. But did they have fun and did they want to come back tomorrow? And that's kind of how I write it. So it's got to be, I kind of think of fitness as it doesn't matter how good your program is if people don't want to come and do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can make the best, most scientifically advanced program, but if people don't enjoy it, they're not going to stick with it. They do it for three weeks. Maybe it was great, but yeah, not gonna be there six months from now. I, I have noticed that a lot of people just want to get slammed the whole time yeah, and just get crushed and then that's it they don't care about anything else and i'm like no. you know you I, I always tell people when i was training i'm like you can't get crushed every single day you can't right i mean you can you can for a while well yeah yeah unless, unless you're gonna get hurt but like you know it's like you need to do some strength portions or like some other accessory works like while you're doing this kind of workout too but like yeah. they don't they don't like that so the way i typically like write a week out is monday through friday i write somewhere between two to four strength days and then two to three conditioning days. Uh, whereas some days we're doing strength work and a conditioning workout, but generally if we're spending time on strength work, it's something short, right? Like a five to 10 minute AMRAP, something along those lines, mm -hmm. basic stuff. I'm not going to slam you on strength and then <laughs> give you heavy weights in the workout. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then two to three kind of longer conditioning days, something around 20 to 30 minutes. I try to kind of hit all the energy systems as much as I can. Uh, you have an hour. So obviously we're not doing five K's and 10 K's and things like that. And also to my earlier point, that's not fun, right? No, no. You the gym and we're running 10 K today, but no, I'm not. See you later. <laughs> um, and then Saturdays I do a partner workout, just something fun that uh, it's, it's kind of detached from the week of programming. Obviously I don't repeat movements or things like that, but the Monday to Friday is kind of the building block. Uh, that's where you're you're working on things and getting better and then saturdays come with a friend and have some fun enjoy the community we usually play a fitness game or something like that to warm up uh people stick around and chat and we have open gym after so people will work on things trying to get muscle ups pull ups that kind of stuff uh, and then saturday i do more of a conditioning uh sorry sunday i do more of a conditioning class so no barbells just dumbbells kettlebells running jumping pushing pulling that kind of stuff and then restart the next week Dang, no breaks, no breaks. No, I mean, I encourage people to take, I definitely had members where I'm like, hey, maybe don't come tomorrow. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I build it in a way too that you could, right? Like 
it's easier to to make the program that if you do come tomorrow, it's easier to have you back off than tell you not to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like I wouldn't you know, do heavy deadlifts today and then max your snatch tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of write it so that you could come multiple days in a row. And then I move things around. I find that like, um, some gyms like squat every Monday, right? Like that's their thing, like back squat Monday, which is cool. Or weightlifting Wednesday is a popular one. I mean, probably just because it has the same letter, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like, what if you're a person though that works Wednesday nights and you can never make the gym, then you never get to weightlift. So I try mm -hmm. to move that stuff around. So if you're like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday person or a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you still get a little bit of everything. And then over the course of time, you end up with well-rounded fitness. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, I, I, I loved, I loved your workout when I was there last a couple of weeks ago. I was that I would that partner workout. So that was, that was yeah, really cool. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. But, um, so when did you realize, um, at that location on route one, the auto mile, um, you know, when was, when did you think like, okay, now I needed to start looking for like a new location because I just, I, I have too many people coming in. Um, so the first time was Thanksgiving. Uh, so you were in that, you came to that spot, right? So it was, no, I was, I wasn't there. So no, oh, so it was 3,200 square feet, uh, including the bathrooms and office. So the actual gym space, I think it was like 30 by 80. Yeah. It was almost like, it was almost like an L shape. There was actually, yeah, it, it was, right. yeah. Cause we had like that little spot where like you had the rig and yeah. then in the back you had like a, like two power racks. Um, yeah. and that, that was it. Yeah. So I had like 36 people show up for a Thanksgiving workout. <laughs> like, I, I just, I had to change the whole workout. I mean, I was expecting people because we only have one class and everybody likes to get a workout in on Thanksgiving, but I had to like, no barbells. I had to do everything, you know, kettlebell. This was before dumbbells were really that relevant in CrossFit. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember when they threw the dumbbells in the opens and everybody yep. was like, we don't have any dumbbells. And now everybody has them. Um, yep. It's funny that that was such a big hole that was exposed. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that was kind of a, okay, I need some more space in this. Uh, it was a combination of that. And I, I opened up on route one for marketing purposes, right? You like, at the time I opened, you couldn't be in an industrial park because nobody was going to find you. Mm -hmm. like you needed exposure. So once I was established, I was four years in. So I did four years there. And then the other side to it was the landlord wanted more money. So he was like, oh, well, you're an established business now, so I can jack your rent up. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I'll just find somewhere better. And I ended up, this place that I moved to is about triple the size. So I'm about 8,000 square feet now. And it's close enough in price that it was definitely worth it. Yeah. That plate. Yeah. yeah. So when I was there, I walked cause like I was such, I was a like used to like the smaller one on route yeah. one. Right. And then I was like, Oh, okay. Well I'll, you know, I want to go to, I want to go to your gym. So like, okay. Went on the website and I'm like, wait a second, you guys moved. And yeah. so like you're in this like industrial park now and it's like all brick. It's like an old like mill or something yeah, like that. A mill. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I drove to the front cause it, like, and they were doing construction. I was like, Oh, this must be in here. And I was like, no. So I, I drove in the back and I saw this like big, you know, this big warehouse and your name on it. And I'm like, Holy cow, this guy bought a bigger gym. And then like when I saw you and I walked in and I was just in awe of how big this place is. Yeah. It was unreal. And even, and even, and even you have like a little spot for like weightlifting too, just like weight, yeah. just weightlifting. Yeah. So we have a, a USA weightlifting affiliate as well. So we have people that do just straight up Olympic weightlifting. Uh, so we have a separate room with a few platforms for them. Yeah. So what, what made you actually pick this place compared to anything else? You mean like that specific location? Yeah. Um, I looked around a lot. Uh, I mean, there were a lot of elements that went into it as far as what was available, what I could, you know, what I could get into in the right amount of time. Um, I really liked kind of what else was going on in that area. So mm -hmm. um, they call it the Norwood Space Center. So there's a bunch of, they, um, they had like a WeWork office. I think that's what it's called, or work bar. Yeah. yeah. People, like rent a cubicle for the day. Uh, so that brings people into there. And there's a brewery in there. 
uh, and the parking lot's really awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, parking is usually an issue at a lot of these places, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, or where you're going to run. So the, uh, we got really fortunate that the parking lot loop is pretty spot on 400 meters. Oh, cool. Very cool. So you don't have to go out onto the street or anything. Everybody can stay in the parking lot. Um, I, I'll have to send you the pictures of this place when I first moved in, because this was a um, granite countertop manufacturing plant. There were big <laughs> stone platforms in it, and the bathroom, I don't think, was clean since the 80s. Oh, uh, It was disgusting. Yeah, we gutted the whole place and put a lot of money into it, but made it everything I kind of, it was my chance to build exactly what I wanted for a gym. Yeah. And you, you did you did a fantastic job with it. So I can't I can't say that enough. That this this place is so cool. But um, I forgot to ask this question before. So, um, are there any like Massachusetts laws that are that like you know prohibit you from like going to certain spaces at all or like what's yeah you got to be zoned. Um, so there's like mixed use zoning. Um, so that was the other part of it. So when those people uh, the developers bought that mill building one of the things they did was they zoned it for fitness use. So oh, I cool. already had that zoning, which made my life a lot easier. I didn't have to go to town meetings and do all that, that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the laws aren't super strict just as long as you have that zoning. Uh, and then I had, because I was changing the building, I had to go through all the fire safety and handicap access and all that uh, extra expensive stuff that hopefully I never need to worry about. Yeah. So how, how much longer did that process take with all like the, you know, dealing with the fire marshal and like the, everything else with this, with the town? Um, it was only a few months. They were pretty good. Uh, Nord's very, very business friendly. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, maybe a few weeks here and there, we had to wait for somebody to come in, but uh, my father is a contractor, like I said before. So I got really lucky with that too. And he knows, I mean, he knows the building inspector and stuff. <laughs> That, that doesn't hurt. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he actually knew the Nord business inspector until after. Like he be, like became friends with him during my project because he had to be in there so much. Mm -hmm. um, but I obviously got some some help with the right subcontractors and things like that and suppliers for different materials that I needed through my dad's connects, which was helpful. Yeah, like more barn saw mats and everything. And uh, those I got. I'm. I very, my wife will laugh at this. I'm a very savvy shopper. I like a good discount. Yes. Uh, I'll spend money on stuff, but I'm always like, I, if I can spend $30 on something, I probably won't spend $40 on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a lot of um, kind of scouring Facebook marketplace and things for like my equipment. I buy everything brand new, but like stall mats, stuff like that. I buy you know, 20 from a gym closing here and by 30, I ended up needing, I think I have something like 360 stall mats in my gym. It's one of the most expensive things I bought is the floor. Um, so I just kind of picked up pieces along the way. I had a few months to prepare. So I just got things along the way and then filled in the gaps where I had to. Uh, and then once you move into a place like that, so moving from, you know, about 3000 square feet to 8,000 square feet, all the equipment you have looks very limited. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then I had to start buying more stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of time too. Um, like I kind of retail therapy for the gym. Like if I want something, you know, you know, you have a bad day and you want to buy something to feel better. I usually buy gym equipment <laughs> um, or if I'm trying to work out myself, I'm like, hey, I really wish I had a, like a, another GHD here. Uh, I go buy one. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, so I took most of the money for the first few years and just put it back into buying equipment. So okay. very few things that you would come into my gym and need that aren't there. Um, and I kind of used the opportunities. I, we had a competition um, back in May and we had a, a, good, a good turnout for it. And I wanted to do a fun floater and I've always wanted to buy a yoke. So I bought a yoke. <laughs> like, very cool. Work somewhere and I just bought J cups for it. So now it's a squat rack. Nice. Very cool. Very um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of put things together along the way and just mm -hmm. buying stuff. Yeah. So when, um, when you went to the new gym and you have your, your clients that were there for the original gym and then they walked into this gym, oh. were they just like in awe the whole time? And they're like, oh. I got to tell my friends to get over here. Yeah. It was a little bit of that. Um, part of it, 
too, is I didn't want to move the gym and expect people to come up. I was very nervous about moving, right? Because I, I was joking with people at the, the, at the time, I can move to the other side of the building and that would be the excuse for some people to drop off, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I can't make it anymore. I actually had a member at the time that um, he was like, oh, I don't think I can make it uh, to the new gym because uh, I won't be able to make it there on time because I come from, you know, this street. Uh, so I looked up her address and I'm like, well, you're, you're actually eight minutes from our current location. You're going to be three minutes from the new location. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, but I can drive on route one so I can drive faster. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. No, that, that makes absolutely no <laughs> sense whatsoever. Uh, yeah, you know, when people look for their way out when they look for their way out, but I wanted to make sure that it was an upward move, not kind of a lateral or a down move. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that was my chance. Like if I make this place nice enough, nobody's leaving. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was part of it. Um, and then now uh, I almost like, I laugh sometimes when people come into my gym and I just like see their eyes open. I'm like, have you done CrossFit before? And they're like, yes. I'm like, where do you go? And they tell me, and I'm like, so do you like the gym? And they're like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm a little, um, my wife will laugh again. I'm not like this at home, but at the gym, I'm like, clean up every speck of chalk and yep. make sure the wall balls face out and all that stuff. Like I put mm -hmm. them in order. Yeah. That's your, that's your baby. Yeah, exactly. That's why. So, um, when I was there, the, uh, the pat, like a couple of weeks ago, so you actually have some like pretty fit individuals. Oh, yeah. Cause I, cause I remember it was, um, me and a younger gentleman together for that workout. And then like, there's like two other girls, like, Oh, oh I'm sorry. I shouldn't call them girls, ladies like with like six pack abs and just like absolutely yeah. like going like head to head with us. And I was like, wow, these, you got some like really, really fit people in here. I do. Yeah. I have a couple of them that are really good. So one of the ones, uh, she's actually a, became a noble model in the last year. Oh, cool. Yeah. So noble actually does their photo shoots in the same complex. So they come into my gym a decent amount. Um, they've done some cool stuff in there. So I've had a couple games athletes come in for that. Uh, Mac Jones was in there a few weeks ago. Oh, really cool. I wasn't allowed to take pictures of him or anything like that, but he was in there. Mm -hmm. You can That's see cool. like my rig, you'll recognize it. If you see some of their ads, you'll see my rig in the background. Um, and then uh, this other woman that I have is unbelievable. She does just the most crushing workouts. And after she's like, that was fun. <laughs> like, I don't know what is wrong with, I don't know if it's wrong with you or what. I'm like, you just beat everybody by four rounds on a 15 minute workout and you're smiling right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which means you could have beaten them by five, which is kind of crazy. Uh, she's one of those people that like, I think, you know, if she wasn't a mom and a full-time worker and that stuff and had the time to devote to it, it was probably pretty close to a games level athlete. Yeah. So do, do thirties, you know? Yeah. So do any of these, any of your like members i know you said earlier like you, that you're you're not really focused on games athletes but do any of your members like have any ambitions to do like masters or or even make it like to semifinals or anything like that um so this woman made it to quarterfinals she makes it to quarterfinals not trying which is wild right <laughs> i hate those people i really do hate those people did you do that um did you do opens this past year yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest i mean i Never yeah. Happened. I mean, granted, like I was doing those workouts at like five 30 in the morning Yeah, and like, so, yeah, it was not, not really the greatest. She's, I think she's 38 now. She finished the burpee dead, uh, the burpee deadlift workout. And then, but she, you know, without, you know, knocking her at all, she just, it's not her focus. She wants, mm -hmm. she comes in, she works out, she has a good time and then she goes home. So there's some skill holes there that if she closed up, she'd probably be there. Uh, one of the quarterfinal workouts, I don't remember how it started, but I know it ended with 20 muscle ups or something like that. Uh, and it was a 20 minute time cap and she got to the muscle ups with, I think nine minutes left, like smoked the first half of the workout, but just doesn't have a muscle up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So does she want to work on that kind of stuff at all? Or she just doesn't. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if she gets one, she's happy, you know? Yeah, um, she did one a few years ago and then just didn't stick with it. And part of it's like I said, I don't program for that. Right. So mm -hmm. she's not in, she's very much, you know, a big fish in a small pond at my gym. My gym's not her. Right. Like, if yeah, she, yeah. you know, across or an Invictus or something like that, she'd be going against people that would give her a run for her money where 
she's beating people by four rounds at my gym. Yeah. And occasionally like I'll jump in or something like that and I can push her a little bit, but she's generally just smoking everybody and everybody just like jaw dropped watching her workout. Yeah, but you know, it's funny, like you, some people just don't want to see those kind of athletes at their gym because they'll like, they'll get intimidated, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause they'll get, they get intimidated and they're like, oh, these people are CrossFit games athletes. And they're saying like, this is the kind of gym I don't want to be involved with. Right. Yeah. Which is part of, I mean, she's a super sweetheart too, which is helpful, you know, mm-hmm. cause usually people will talk to her first and she's built, right. You can tell that she's strong when you first see her. Um, but then she's never not smiling and having a good time either. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she wants you to do well. Like if you beat her, she's like, oh, rats. You got you. <laughs> no, she's not like, I'm going to come and kill you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I think that as a, as a business, you really have to decide which way you want to go with that stuff. Um, I don't think there are as many games athletes out there as they are people who just want to be in shape. So I yeah. kind of made that, I think, professional decision to go towards that market. Yep. Yeah. Um, having, having games athletes don't make you money. No, it doesn't. It used to because people go, Hey, where did the games athletes go? I'm going to go mm-hmm. there because yeah. back, you know, 10 years ago, the people that were doing CrossFit wanted to go to the games. Mm-hmm. Now you just do it as you know, you have, drop the kids off at soccer or go get your workout in and go back and pick them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. So it's definitely evolved a lot, which you've, you've had to kind of change your focus too. And there's so many competitors popping up too. And they're kind of all, it's funny. I, I laugh about it sometimes because there's all these people that don't understand that all of these other things that they're doing because CrossFit scary are kind of just offshoots of CrossFit, right? Like Orange Theory got its start by being kind of taking what CrossFit did and making it kind of jazzed up and fancier. Yep. Yep. Um, F45, the same thing. Same thing, right? Like they're all, and then people would do F45 and Orange Theory and be like, oh, I could never do CrossFit. That's scary. Or CrossFit will get you hurt. And I'm like, you're doing the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, um, I, sometimes I'll take people through a workout. Like they'll take like the Perspire class or something like that, which is more, it seems like a boot camp, and then they finish it. Like you realize you were just doing CrossFit, right? Like that's mm-hmm. the same as what one of the workouts were. You just did a dumbbell instead of a barbell. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I do. So when I was personal training people, I would do, I wouldn't even tell them they're doing CrossFit. I would pretty much tell them like, Hey, we're going to do this workout every minute. You're going to do this, or like you have to do this many rounds and stuff like that. And, you know, they would be like, okay, they're like on the floor. And I'm like, do you realize you just did a CrossFit workout and you were like super scared about CrossFit? And they're like, oh, okay. And like, oh, that's not that, that wasn't that bad. I'm like, yeah, they, they, everyone sees like the epic fail moments for like CrossFit and stuff like that. And then that's how they get scared. And so I was like, okay, well, it's not, it's not like that. I see it go the other way too, where I see a lot of personal trainers who badmouth CrossFit and I watch them train people. I'm like, you're having them do thrusters and pull-ups, right? Like you're having them do Fran, like <laughs> you're doing CrossFit with your athlete, like your client while you tell them CrossFit's bad for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I also try to, when people come in, everybody's apprehensive about trying new things. I try to explain people like working out at a CrossFit gym and thinking you're going to get hurt is like watching because you watch the CrossFit games, right? People watch the CrossFit games and like, I could never do that. Like, I'll get hurt if I do that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't watch the NFL. And if somebody threw a ball to you in their backyard, you wouldn't go, no, I can't do that. And NFL players get hurt, right? Yep. Uh, it's just a different intensity level. CrossFit like genuinely is for everybody. Um, yeah. Like both my parents do CrossFit. They're both, you know, in their mid to late sixties. Um, I have, a, I have members from 17 years. Well, actually I train a couple 10 year olds now. So I have members from 10 all the way up to, I think my oldest member is 74 right now. Nice. Very cool. So it's a very diverse group of people And the 74 year old is so good. And like she does pull-ups, she deadlifts like 180. It's wild. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So, yeah. How, so how many people do you have in your gym now? Um, I have like 120. Dang, that's insane. Good yeah, for you. I wouldn't mind more. Well, of course. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm at that kind of inflection point where I know everybody that goes to my gym right now. And I'm mm-hmm. starting to get to the point where like I still do all the foundations and that. 
Um, I feel the point coming where I'm going to come into my gym and not recognize somebody though, you know, yep. which is kind of the moment you've switched to now I own a business versus now versus I work at a CrossFit gym. Right. Yep. Um, so I'm kind of on that line right now where I think I want to go there. Mm-hmm. I also like knowing everybody and having a feel on like, I can feel the vibe of my gym change and shift. Uh, so I can respond to it, which I think is good. Um, I get a kick anytime somebody comes in, they're like, Hey, I'm so-and-so I'm new here. And I'm like, I know <laughs> like, I've never been here before. I'm like, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> if you had been, I would have met you by now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, do you, do you have, like, are you looking to, um, to grow like more, have more coaches coach and stuff like that, or like kind of yeah. what's, what's, good, what's the game plan? So right now I have a good stable of part-time coaches. Um, like I have a lot of people that I think are great coaches. They all coach two classes a week, something like that, two or three mm-hmm. cover for each other here and there. I'm still doing the majority of it. Um, I'd love to have somebody come in and take a good chunk more. Obviously, as everybody knows right now, the labor market is pretty tough. Um, and if you're somebody that's making six figures in your uh, work from home job and can coach a couple CrossFit classes at night, you're not going to leave that six figure job to coach 10 classes of CrossFit a week, right? No. Um, and it's, I looked into it last year. Uh, I'm kind of on that fence of, do I just bite the bullet and pay somebody a, a decent salary and just eat it for a little bit so I can focus on growing the business a little bit more myself so I'm not in the classes so much? Or do I make the money first and then pay the person? Uh, so I started looking at it last year and I don't know how it, it is in other states, but in Massachusetts, uh, whatever you pay somebody, about half of that goes back on top and benefits as well. So like if I were to pay somebody like 70,000, it would actually cost me 105,000. Oof, jeez. Like between the benefits and, you know, paid time off and health insurance, dental, all that. It's all required once they go full time, uh, employee taxes, all that. So it gets pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, do I do that or do I just keep working and then do it myself? But yeah, can, point, you know, can they be considered a 1099? Um, it's a very gray area. Okay. <laughs> so not somebody that works that much. So uh, every, every state's different. Um, there's a bunch of rules that go into it with like, if they can pick the classes that they coach versus I tell them what classes they coach and mm-hmm. if they have a uniform or they can wear whatever they want. There's a bunch of rules that go into it that you kind of have to navigate your way through them. Um, but I don't have anybody that really does a lot, right? Everybody just kind of comes and goes as they please and take what they want to take. So that helps. Yeah, that's good. Aspect of it. it doesn't help me have a, a flourishing outside of the gym life, but it helps with the, the tax side of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So we're getting close to the end. So I have a couple like rapid fire questions, but they're not really rapid fire. They're like pretty slow, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, so, um, what are your goals for the rest of the year for the gym, um, or, or, or personal? Um, well, so a big goal, I, um, I just started a supplement company. So, um, oh, cool. I, well, I should have talked about that. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. I wasn't, I'm not trying to plug it. I just started out. Um, so I just uh, got the email today that my pre workout is in production. So that's pretty cool. It's actually an Atlanta based company that's producing it for me. Oh, cool. Um, so I don't know if they actually, I think they're in like Dinwiddie or something like that. D- Dunwoody? Dunwoody. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the outskirts. It's so, so the way it works is Atlanta is like surrounded by this like big circle. So mm-hmm. they call it the perimeter and that's like 285. So mm-hmm. it's Dunwoody's like North of the perimeter. So there's like probably like the next town up off, yeah. off of the perimeter. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that's going to be coming in the next, you know, month or two, once I get that, um, uh, starting small, just with a pre-workout, going to see how that goes. Uh, I find like, I told you I worked at GNC when I was uh, like in college and I spent, I worked in Bridgewater, which was a very small town, in mm-hmm. the college town. Um, but when college wasn't there, no, nobody was. So I spent a lot of time reading the labels and information on the back of the supplements. Um, you know, I'm sitting in a store for like seven hours and see five people who just read everything. So I got really into that side of things. Um so I was looking for a pre-workout recently and I found that 
uh, all the good pre-workouts, they ended up changing all the ingredients as they got more popular. So then mm -hmm. they stopped working as well. So I just started buying kind of raw ingredients and mix them together and make them my own and found the formula that I liked. I was like, you know, I should just make this and then sell it and just sell a good product. Uh, so we'll start with that and see where that goes. That might be my, my ticket out. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, actually, it's funny, funny thing you talk about supplements. So I was listening to a podcast with the guys from Ghost Lifestyle. Yeah. So um, they actually, uh, they don't write the proprietary blend on their uh, supplement label. They actually write down like every single Yeah, so that's how mine supplement. is, right? Okay. So mine says exactly. So I started reading, like I, I'm not a real like super into school person, but I really like to learn things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm that person that goes into a Google rabbit hole and by 3 a.m. I know who founded Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I got there, but I end up there. Um, so I started going, I started reading the actual clinical trials of all the ingredients that are popping up in these pre-workouts. And I don't know if you know what beta alanine is. Mm -hmm. So that's a really popular uh, endurance thing. Um, so Matt Frazier bragged about like, that was the thing that he was taking that yep. he said he felt like it gave him a third lung. Uh, but the clinical trials, it was a 28 day clinical trial, I believe. And it was, I think three and a half grams a day over that 28 day period increased your endurance exponentially. But then you see these supplements that have like 500 milligrams of it in there. So I'm reading all these labels and they have all the flashy ingredients, but not enough of any of it to actually do anything. Mm -hmm. So you look at the label and you're like, oh, it's got beta alanine, it's got agmatine, it's got uh, glycerol, like all this stuff that you know you'll get into at some point, um, but not enough to actually do anything. So I wanted to make a supplement that had enough to do everything uh, and actually work. Uh, kind of goes with how I felt about fitness, right? Like yep. I don't just sell you a box of nothing. I want you'd actually get something out of what you're buying. So yeah, very cool. Try to apply that to supplements and hopefully, hopefully it's profitable too. Right. I'm yeah. sure there's a reason all these companies start to cut out the expensive ingredients. Right. Yeah. So, um, are you, are you looking to, um, is it like CrossFit, like legal, like, you know, is it like WADA yeah, approved? No yeah. There's no banned substances or anything like that in it. Um, it has to go through, um, this is something that I'm learning about as I go, obviously this was an idea I had, and then I started going down, down the rabbit hole with it. And I'm learning about, you know, the, um, the tests and procedures that have to be done and certificate of analysis and all this extra expenses that mm -hmm. come up along the way and where you get there. And I'm like, I didn't know any of this stuff had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> like a five day microbial test that has to be done on the batch to make sure mm -hmm. there's no bacteria in it and things like that. Um, so yeah, I want something that kind of anybody can take. Uh, I'm not going to gear it specifically towards CrossFit. I think that there's obviously a niche that I know pretty well in there, but it's something that anybody could use. Yeah. Um, um, so what, what about the gym? Are you looking to like expand it or like you looking to buy new things? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, so I think once I get to the point where I can have a general manager is when I would maybe move on, open another gym, or uh, probably the thing that probably makes the most sense is acquiring another gym that is doing okay, not great, that I think I can put better systems into, uh -huh. um, something with a membership base. Um, just kind of finding the right opportunity. I've looked at a few. I bounce around with ideas if if I want to buy something close that I could drive back and forth to, or if I want to, you know, buy something in South Carolina and have, you know, some fun with it. Yeah, and, be, be like a snowbird down in South, uh, South yeah, Carolina. I could do a couple months up here, go there for the weekend, check in on the gym. But you got to have the right team. Um, I'm still kind of searching for the right person that I can kind of let my business go. To. It's my baby, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, you just give that over to somebody. I don't want to leave, and I've, I've had some members for seven years, right? Six, seven years, a decent amount actually. I probably have twenty to thirty of my members have been with me at least three or four years. Um, so I don't want to do them wrong by leaving them in the wrong hands. Yeah, of course. Yeah, un understandable. Um, so uh, next question. So, uh, what is your favorite book? Favorite book. Oh, Twilight. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did read them. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not like a huge book reader. I read a lot of information. Um, 
I read a book that I thought was really good business wise called um, The Pumpkin Plan. Okay. I don't remember the guy that wrote it, but uh, kind of the whole principle of it is when people grow these like massive prize pumpkins, what they do is they plant their pumpkin seeds and then whichever pumpkins aren't growing, they pull them off the vine and they focus on the best ones. Mm -hmm. So the principle is that you should target your business towards those big pumpkins, right? Okay. And obviously those pumpkins are your, your good members, right? Those are the ones that come in, they don't complain, they like you, you like them, you enjoy training them. And when you put all of your energy into training those people and taking care of them and making sure they're happy, you attract more people like them. Mm -hmm. So then your business is geared towards that person versus trying to make sure that all the pumpkins survive and not really giving any one of them what it really needs to thrive. Okay. I thought that was a really good principle that I was able to apply. And now I like pretty much everybody that I get to work with. So. Okay. Awesome. That, that's a good book. I, yeah. I've, I've never ever heard of that one before. Yeah. It's uh, Mike McCallowitz actually, I think is the name. Of the okay. Guy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, next question. So um, what is in your gym bag? My gym bag is on the floor in my office because I never <laughs> actually need a gym bag anymore. I yeah, true. That I'm never out of. Um, I think I have, I have two jump ropes because double unders are my favorite. Uh, I made it a point when I was in B, I realized that if you get good at double unders, you will win every double under workout, mm -hmm. no matter what else is in there. Cause people trip over the ropes a lot. Yep. Um, so I like double unders. So I have this again, faster rope that I bought in like 2016. No, no, sorry. I bought it in like 2013, probably that they don't even make anymore. And I just like keep it in a bag and protect it. I just like the feel of it. It's just yep. like, Awesome. Um, I think I have maybe like some wrist wraps, but like I said, I don't really use a gym bag. So I just have every, my stuff's kind of just thrown all over the place at the gym. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of figured that. So I, I was like, I was like, I don't oh, know if, I don't know if yeah. this is going to be a good one. Yeah, no. I have some Ray-Ban knee sleeves. I need those. Yeah. So, so I've had, I've had Ray-Ban, um, the Ray-Ban knee sleeves for a while, like not a while, but like, Every time I use them, like the seams always like burst, like blow up. I don't know what, so I bought, I have the, a pair of the like blue seven millimeter ones. Yeah. yeah. I, bought. I bought them in 2013 or 14. I still have the same pair. They're awesome. Uh, they were, I don't know what they do with them now, but they were great back then. They were, I think like $40 each when I bought them now. So I'm sure they changed their model to. No, no, they didn't. No, they're still that expensive. It's... Yep. Uh, but they're the thicker ones. I tried getting the thinner like CrossFit ones, but they just folded up on me. Um, I have a very interestingly shaped leg where I have big quads and tiny calves. Mm -hmm. um, everything just <laughs> shifts down on me. <laughs> All um, right, cool. So um, this one, this next question is a, li is a little deep. So yeah. uh, let's just say you're lying on your deathbed. It's the last day of you, um, you know, on this planet. So how do you want people to know you as? It's a tough one, right? It's a, I don't know. I think I just, I want people to at least remember me as being generally a good person, right? I don't think, I don't think it's possible to say the right thing all the time or be in the right place or all that, but at least know that I tried to be, mm. you know? Um, like I do like helping, like I do what I do because I like working with people and helping them, obviously you don't become rich owning a CrossFit gym. Um, but I enjoy my job and I like being around people and I like the people, well, I like the people I get to be around. Um, so I guess just that uh, I, I did my best and I tried to do the right thing. Okay, cool. I, I'll take that. I'll well, take that. kind of lame, but. No, uh, no, trust me. No, that, that, was, that was a good one. So uh, last, so last and final question. So, um, where can people like reach out to you? Um, you know, if they have any questions about, you know, your gym and, you know, or anything else, or even like supplements, like how to start a supplement company, where can they reach out to you? Well, starting a supplement company, I'm still working on figuring out that. So, well, I'm I mean, you've already, you've already taken the first couple steps. So yeah, I've jumped on. Yeah. So, um, I have obviously my gym. I'm just Craig at CrossFitProsperity.com or I have Instagram. I have 
three Instagram, well, I have four, I guess. I have like my personal one, which is at Coach Krabby, C-R-O-B-B-Y zero, uh, no, just a, Coach, like C-O-A-C-H-C-R-O-B-B-Y. Uh, Robbie was my nickname in college, uh, high school sports. So okay. See Robbie. People always say uh, Krabby, and they never really get it. Um, <laughs> but I was C, and then Robbie, because... Uh, you did you play football or anything? You're a bigger guy. So yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. Your coach never wants to say your full last name, right? Just go, Robbie, get out there. Yeah, they but they well, I mean mine's Lennon, so you can't really oh, yeah. you can't abbreviate it. So Okay. Yeah, my name is long, so they didn't want to say the whole thing. Um and then uh my supplement company is Prosperity Nutrition Co. That's on Instagram. That's new. So it just has one one picture of the pre workout coming soon. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, um, I want to thank you for, you know, taking the time because I know you're, you're a very busy, busy individual. So taking the time to, you know, learn more about you and your gym and, you know, now your supplement company, which I had no idea either. It's so new. it's new. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you having me on. It was cool to get to do this. I know you've had some, some people with a lot more followers than me on here. So well, I mean, I, I, I wanted to get you on because of, you know, from where I seen you the first time to yeah. now, which is like amazing because not a lot of gyms are that successful to going from like, you know, a small, like, you know, strip mall to like this big, huge warehouse like that. Yeah. I think just once you kind of figure out that you can do it, I don't know, like that first, like it's, uh, I opened up with three members, which it was obviously terrifying. Like it was when I was, I was shaking signing the lease for, I think my lease was like five grand a month or something. And I had $300 a month coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, uh, but then once you get to the point where you're, you're starting to break even, you're making money and you're, you're doing it really opens up your, your ideas of jumping into new stuff and pushing the boundaries and taking risks. I need the supplement company now that I've sold zero. Actually, I have a few pre-sales, so that's going okay so far. Okay. All right, uh, cool. All right. Well, um, I would, I would love to have you back on. Yeah. So, especially with the supplement company, cause I'm very fascinated with that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. like, like I said, thank you for your time. And I do appreciate everything, you know, that I've, you know, let me go into your gym twice and I know I still have your t-shirt too. Yeah. No, I gotta get that from you. Uh, I have, I told you I have a buddy of mine that's type one. Yeah. So I was going to pass it on to him. Um, yeah. Anytime you're up here, you're more than welcome. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks.